Hello and welcome to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. My name is Adam Cheesy McGuire and welcome to another rousing rendition of AFK. And while our players are setting up for what is destined to be a full night of Rocket League, I have one of the best analytics members for the Boise State team on desk with me to talk about something absolutely absurd, absolutely crazy, over the top amazing. Daniel Glovely, the loveliest man I know. Thank you so much for joining me today. We spent the last 10 years being absolutely enthralled with Riot and Riot Games and of course League of Legends and now they can be proud of the games moniker because for their 10th anniversary they just stuffed us full of content and new intellectual properties. Uh, they've been locked away for years and years and years and years and finally it is possible they are gunning for the boys over at Blizzard with a game that has possibly been labeled as the Overwatch killer. Glovely, elaborate on that for me. So what they're creating is a game that is currently under the title Project A, and it is not, in fact, featuring League of Legends characters. This isn't like uh, Vayne and Misfortune and right. Caitlyn running around. Um, these are completely new characters, completely new setting. Um, very much a class-based shooter, very much like Overwatch, like um, Team Fortress 2, that sort of game. But there's a lot more focus on abilities uh, that are more utility-based as opposed to like outright killing power. There's no tank class in the game that is absorbing damage from your foes. Um, very aggressive run and gun. And do you think this has the actual mentality and properties behind it to contend with something like Overwatch that has built its own league around it? Um, I don't actually see this as being as much of an Overwatch game as maybe a competitor to something like CSGO. Um, the much more aggressive play style leads to a lot more stealth-based, um, a lot more tactical in a very different way from, say, Overwatch, um, in which you can afford to take hits, in which you can have a healer um, who is healing up someone who is soaking up damage for your team. It creates a very different mindset when you're going into it. And as you can see here on the screen, some of the abilities that are available, they mentioned this is not your typical run-of-the-mill run-and-gunner where you have infinite lives and are just waiting on the respawn, but rather more a tactical situation where one life, one objective, and that is the game. And as we're taking looks at what they have been doing, like you mentioned, more utility and even more exciting situations from Riot. Now, here's another question that I have to ask about. A few years ago, some fans were working on putting together a League of Legends-based fighting game. Oh, yes. And you had, like, you had the QWER and a couple of summoner spells you could choose. You could call in champions for a gank, and that was it. Um, that was what they were building on. And we haven't seen anything for that for a while, but we heard they were contacted by Riot Games. Well, now we've heard that there is a new um, game coming out from Riot Games. They're currently calling it Project L, I believe. Um, and it's a League of Legends fighting game in which they are uh, going head-to-head -head with each other with League of Legends champions. So we saw Darius, we saw Katarina, we saw Jinx in the background, we saw Ari. Right. Um, so those who do not know, I got my start in esports fighting games. Street Fighter II Turbo was one of the first games I ever picked up, as my tiny young brain can remember. And all I can say is, how do you do Ken Riot Games? I am so unbelievably excited for what they have. When was the last time a fighting game had 150-some-odd characters? And 
you see right here the Darius just absolutely bodying an Ari. That just makes my like literally getting goosebumps as we are talking about it. So excited to see what they have. You see the special meter down below. You mentioned in the assist being called, which is like a jungler coming into gank. So keeping the core of what is Riot Games League of Legends and then advancing into a whole new world. Very excited to see what it is and which champions are going to be absolutely busted and which function like other fighting game characters, if you know what I mean. Now my question really is, can it work? I mean, you're talking about you know hundreds and hundreds. Of, we've got almost 200 champions at this point, 150-ish, I think, around that range. Mm -hmm. um, so can that work? Can you get that much representation in? Uh, absolutely. I think it's going to be a fine balance and check as far as the fighting game community is concerned. I mean, they're still arguing over Street Fighter 4 and there's a Street Fighter 5 already out kind of thing. The ebbs and flows of fighting games are very, very interesting, and it takes a lot for something to maintain its prowess in the fighting game community. You take a look at games like DB Z Fighter Z, like that, what they weren't sure how it was going to go. There were some questions, and suddenly it is one of the top, if not the top, fighter out there, standing with games like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, your Smash Brothers, things of that nature. But uh, that is not the only thing, my friend. A handful of months, almost a year ago, Blizzard, not to keep kicking the dog when it's down, once asked Diablo players, What? You guys don't have mobile phones? over the Diablo Immortal announcement. But Riot says, can you hear me now? Much like the Verizon guy, just an absolutely disrespectful amount of mobile content coming this way, Glovely. And the question is, are you going to have enough time in a day to play all of these things? Well, it's funny you should mention time because that's one of the things that Riot took into account. What they're building right now, um, these mobile games, these console versions of League of Legends, they're calling it Wild Rift. It is um, a completely separate game from your base League of Legends experience. So those of you who are worried about getting mobile players in your solo queue games, you can <laughs> calm down. You're not going to have that situation on you. Um, as a matter of fact, some of these champions even have their abilities altered. If you watch um, one of the trailers, I believe right. someone is redirecting Ash's Enchanted Crystal Arrow um, right. around the map, re-angling it. Uh, so you've got some new mechanics based on the game. Um, and they are intentionally designing the games to make them shorter so that they don't take up so much time right. so that you can get in and out of games a lot faster. And don't forget, we've got ourselves a TFT clone coming out this way. So that is, if you can't get enough of the dragon drop and the champions up to level three, you're going to get even more of that. And then, I mean, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much content we're not even going to cover on this point, uh, un unfortunately, just because we just really don't have enough time. But Glovely, you are the analytics guy. As far as the League of Legends broadcasts are concerned, Concerned. We bring you on every time, and right now, number changes are sky high, and I am alluding directly to things like Dragon, Spear of Shojin, and this new preseason patch. What can we come to expect, and is this going to turn the Rift upside down? Well, to say that you're turning the Rift upside down, like, my goodness, the Rift is changing. It is physically changing oh, yeah. in its shape and its form. Um, they've added some new things that we're, we've been referring to as nooks and crannies. I and call like it the, uh, the, the smokers area because only the lowest hive of scum and villainy will actually use that piece, like a ramus that just ring yeah. around the rosary. It, it reminds me actually a little bit of Dominion where yeah. they had those little back areas. that I used to love those, so I'm glad that they're bringing at least a little bit of Dominion back. We're seeing it in the top and the bottom lanes respectively and some changes as far as midway through the lanes as well too. Yeah, but the biggest change overall is the dragons. When you have three dragons on the on your team um, you get a bonus buff that right. um, is that changes so uh, mountain drakes are now about um, armor and magic resist they scale like your infernal drake does but for mouth. defensive stats right um, your ocean drake now is specifically health it doesn't recover mana so oh, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult for siege teams to be able to last forever right and of course um, finally, the Cloud Drake, you see they are removing the Spear of Shojin. They finally accepted that's a broken item. They so even admitted they, it today on stream, just so you know. <laughs> so they are bringing it back, in a way, mm -hmm. in the form of the Triple Cloud Drake buff. They're calling right. it the Cloud Soul. Uh, right. These are all Dragon Soul buffs. And what it, ha what it does is you get your basic, at your, your basic attack cooldown is reduced every time you auto-attack. Right. And that's absolutely terrifying. Absolutely. Uh, things like Renekton, you know, like Shyvana might come back. Those a lot of like on proc hit champions. You can see probably like an Udyr, Udyr run with something like this. Uh, again, depending on how you want to build about it. Uh, but this new preseason setup is going to be absolutely amazing. Like I said, it's been a while since we have physically seen the rift change from the position of Baron and Dragon and the way they set up those nooks and crannies uh, to just the implementation of the new jungle pieces, the blast cone, you know, extra vision, the the uh, healing in the river as well as scuttle crab. So very curious to see 
see what is going to unfold here in the next handful of months for the company Riot Games, as well as all the impacts it will have here as far as esports are concerned. Like I said, we've got a rousing series here in the next little bit as both Rocket League teams from Boise State University will be taking on a myriad of opponents in NACE as well as other competitions we've got going on. So if you enjoy the esports, if you enjoy high pack action, we'll see you here in just a little bit. with my mind like that we're wrong can't keep it right no no poison or perfect see the revenge in your eyes spare the goodbyes replace them with fights oh the gun hand on the trigger can't pull the trigger consumed by a figure me a masterpiece, disaster filled dream bound to be going up in flames. You know, I love the pain. We're going up in flames. We're going.
Good evening and welcome to the Game Pants Esports Arena in downtown Boise, Idaho. This is Boise State Esports with Rocket League. We are in the middle of the NACE Rocket League season and tonight we have four exciting matches from both Rocket League squads tonight against a variety of universities. I'm your host Jacob Palmer aka Gem Mountain and we were going to be starting with a match against St. Clair and to help me call the action we've got Lisa Jolly Mauhaus and Adam Cheesy McGuire with us. It's great to have you two here. And I want to pose the night tonight as this. Boise State has been entering these games at the top, near the top of the bracket. I mean, they, are, they have a great reputation about them. But there are other teams at the top of the bracket, too, most notably St. Clair and Mizzou, which Boise State is playing tonight. And in the past, they've had a little bit of trouble playing against these teams. So the question is, what does Boise State have to do tonight against these very talented teams to prove that they deserve to be here and they deserve to be at the top of the bracket? Well, first, I think that Boise State was really lucky going up against some of these teams early on in the season, you know, pre-NACE even, and realizing maybe where their flaws were or where they could supersede them at times, kind of analyzing their gameplay at that point. And so Boise State going back into this has at least kind of had a chance to regain their footing, uh, get ahead of themselves. Last week they had some incredible games, a lot of, you know, 3-0s, and Boise State can take that and run with it. So I think we're going to see very different games up against these high-tier teams this time. Well, and as far as Boise State is concerned, did we forget that these are the reigning Mountain West champion Boise State Broncos? Excuse me. Yes, they're going to come across some speed bumps. The rest of the crews have been sitting here trying to catch up. And yeah, they came across Mizzou, and they had a little bit of problem with St. Clair. But I believe in my heart of hearts that Boise State just needs to go back to the origin story. And on top of that, feed off of the energy of the crowds that are here and really bring themselves back up up to par because I know they are capable of doing it. And BSU, Broncos, check it out. There's some signs out there, there's some cowbells, and these people are rooting for you. That's what I think needs to happen. I think Boise State as the most biased caster in North America, I think they need to refine the roots, take a couple of deep breaths, and then put St. Clair in a body bag or a trunk, whichever you know place you put your bodies when you win. Well, maybe a biased caster, but certainly entertained. This is what I love having Chizu on the desk because I might say uh, there might be other casters, which all of our casters do a great job here, but if there's an unfortunate play, another caster might say, oh, that's really unfortunate. How can they change this? Uh, Chizu will be like, that is disrespectful. They have families to go home to. <laughs> go to bed. No dinner for you. No late night television. That was, you know, I, that's because I know what these guys are capable of, and yes. Jolly, you have talked about this ad nauseum in instances, that these guys know what they're doing, and it's not like it's a shocker that, you know, they are as good as they are. Just a couple of missteps. Oh, absolutely. And everybody makes those missteps. You know, even the best of the best is going to falter every so often. But the best thing about this team is that they learn from each of those falters. Each of those stumbles leads them to educating themselves against something that will help them in the future. And we can see that consistently in their gameplay as they are getting better and better. And already two demolitions coming through, two members of Boise State being knocked out just 10 seconds into this round. And as we take a look at your St. Clair lineup, as far as these players are concerned, you have Tyson 
Tiberius Campbell, who is an electronics engineering major, Mark Endeavor Apico, who is also an EE major, and Ahmed Icy Vivid Al Tawani. If I said that wrong, I do apologize. Computer science major for the side of St. Clair. And then you take a look, of course, your Boise State Broncos. You got Cosmo Buster, Ace Pocket, LC Core, of course, Miles Cosmo Buster. Her grant is a computer science major. And Icy Vivid going to be getting the first shot here for St. Clair. Right past Boise State there. It was a really good attempt by oh. Ace Pocket, just a little bit too low, and it looked like he actually kind of flipped his vehicle down there uh, in an attempt to get there faster, which might have potentially ended up letting that goal go through, but Boise State has four minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Endeavor and St. Clair here in general, general, the Griffins with the demolitions are nonstop. They are being absolutely ruthless, and that's what led to that first goal right there as Boise State is trying to get into an offensive position, which is a spot they have not been in throughout the entirety of this first handful of minutes. And again, don't forget, you've got uh, Oscar Ace Pocket uh, Filson, as well as Matt L.C. Coro Ness uh, as a computer science major as well. Wanted to make sure they got their due credit on this crew as well. As Cosmo is up to turn this away over the crossbar, is able to do so. As L.C. Coro went to clear it, Endeavor is actually going to be accredited with that one. A severe misplay there from Boise State University. Cosmo tries to clear it. Endeavor gets it on. You'll see Cosmo get a wheel on there, but it just goes right into the back of the net. St. Clair finds the second. Three minutes, 44 seconds left on the clock, but there's been so much from, there's so much aggression coming from St. Clair. Boise State doesn't really know how to respond just yet. Luckily, this is a best of five, so they have many more rounds ahead of them to at least be able to adjust. Hopefully, here, Cosmo Buster missing a pretty critical jump there. No boost and no momentum going to actually lift him up off the ground, but he's able to reclaim his positioning here, and he does have a good supply of boost, which is something that Boise State struggles with and something they've been focusing Ooh. a lot on recently. That was a filthy pass and almost a crazy shot right there as Boise State tried to slow it. Ace pocket to Cosmo. I'm thinking there are a little bit of communication issues going on in the early part. You see both members going for that. <laughs> Cosmo tries to get an aerial play there, is not able to do so. Picks up the big one so he could have a second attempt here as LC is going to set this up, but it is booted back to the side of Boise State, forcing Cosmo to return that to the neutral area. Cosmo is there to receive it in kind. LC Coral to Cosmo, off the wall, not going to be able to find one there and the Boise State players must head back the Broncos looking to regain ground and a shot on goal from Endeavor from the right hand side sneaks through 3-0 for St. Clair. That view that we had too we were not seeing Endeavor whatsoever it looked like Cosmo might have had that and uh, Endeavor makes it happen there. Cosmo Buster really working or lacking on speed there as we saw with the boost. He hit 0% just in trying to make that offensive play. Had no boost to get himself back to a defense position. Strong 50-50 there is immediately thwarted as two members of the Broncos are taken off of the field with demolitions. Cosmo looks to get a bumper on that. He can't, but Ace Pocket puts it on net and he's gonna find it. First one for Boise State University. They still got some gallop in them. LC Coral getting the assist on that one and just a fantastic lob Bloop. from Cosmo Bus or from Ace Pocket there. Fantastic setup, and that's what we like to see from Boise State getting a little bit of momentum in their direction. 228 on the clock, so just about halfway or a little over halfway through this first round. Boise State, we've seen make several goals in less time than that. Last week, we saw them make five goals, I think, in three minutes. So they have some time under their belt to take this one for themselves. I see Vivid likes to get a little explosions as far as this game is concerned, taking out yet another Bronco here as the Griffins or the Saints, whichever name you feel that you know them by. Uh, Cosmo Buster flicks it over the top, but Tiborius is there to stop the play at hand as Cosmo is going to peel back and gather some more boost, hoping his allies will be able to thwart this offensive shot. And it's coming through, and Ace Pocket is there just in time. Time. I see Vivid is just playing Demolition Derby. He's not playing Rocket League. He's playing Seek and Destroy as he finds yet another Bronco there to take off of the field. But Boise State University continues their aggression here on the orange side. A little bit of a play here as Ace Pocket's going to set that up. A cross comes through. Ace Pocket not quite there to field that one as LC is looking for a second attempt here. But Cosmo with the shot, he finds it! As That's Boise State claws their way back. A minute 30 now, so just a one uh, one minute is all it took. So, you know, one more, and there's still 30 left on the clock for them to break that tie. Two to three now. Lots of goals on board for this being the first round of this best of five series. 
and we know that this is going to be a consistent scrim partner in the future. Absolutely, and the other thing I want to bring up is that because we are here early setting up for production and stuff, we kind of get to see the players beforehand, and Cosmo has been working on those shots ad nauseum over and over and over again. He's playing it off the left or the right-hand side of the wall, but a shot here is too far right, and again with the second touch, Tiberius is not able to bury it, and Boise State has just been gifted a gift from the gods, as that was almost a surefire goal, but Boise State clamps down and knocks it out of the park with a shot of their own turned away there by Icy Vivid. But Boise State not going to relent. 60 seconds to go. A gift, if you say so. That seems more like a, more like a take from the rich and give to the poor <laughs> kind of thing. They played the crap out of that. Endeavor now with another demolition on the Cosmo Buster. It is on St. Clair's defensive side. They're going to bring it back to Boise State side here. 41 seconds left on the clock. So under a minute, Boise State needs to be able to get one more to tie this up. Nice flick over the top there of Ace Pocket. Cosmo is there to clear it out. With full boost, he is looking to strike as Ace Pocket is biding his time, but he is quickly running out of it. 30 seconds, he gets a touch, and it looks good, but turned away immediately by Endeavor. Cosmo to follow up, second touch is no good. Now Ace Pocket looking to recenter this. Can Boise State find one more and push this into overtime where they excel, or is this it? The last 15 seconds here on the clock, Ace Pocket trying to redirect, but it looks like St. Clair has a great position on this ball. Ace Pocket looks to ricochet it out, is not able to get the speed that he would have liked on it. The final seconds coming down, can Boise State stop this? immediately spiked, but it was during the last second, so we still have some fight here as Boise State looks to get a touch, but the Saints will pick up game number one. Very close game and a good start from Boise State. We always talk about during these series how the first round or two in particular against a new opponent is a little bit off kilter for Boise State because they really try to recognize exactly what is going on with the opposing team there, uh, what strategies they use that work very well. And it seemed like every strategy the Saints took there worked well for them. Well, when you're out shooting your opponent, it's also going to lead to more scoring opportunities. The Saints there accredited with 13 shots on goal. Broncos, only eight. That's actually a pretty small margin, even though uh, you know they walked away with the one-point victory. And Boise State was definitely what showing. What are those save stats, huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> what are those save stats? Where's the defensive prowess <laughs> yeah. of both of these teams? But that being said, both showing up today, obviously. Uh, St. Clair comes out hot, heavy, ready, and good to go. Boise State has a nice adjustment about 2.30 in, where they were starting to play 50 50, very, very aggro, very aggressive. We saw it work out a couple times, saw it not so much, but we definitely got to see that more with Boise State. Well, not just the shots on goal, the demolitions, as I was tallying, there was six. I actually counted uh, I actually counted nine. <laughs> I'm hearing yeah, six in my ear. I counted nine. There were nine. more than six. There were multiple occasions where there were two, two at, at the once. exact same there time. Were, at least yes. two occasions. So that yes. right there was four. And then we saw both Endeavor and Icy Vivid just like monsters. And not yeah. like monster trucks because they're in tiny vehicles. <laughs> but they were using their boost specifically to poke out certain members of Boise State. But at the same time, they were using it very well on those mm -hmm. offensive plays to make the goals. So... Really, their utility on that is exceptional, and I don't even know how they were able to manage that. It's very difficult to play Rocket League when you're not on the field. It's very hard to stop the shots that your opponent are drilling at you when you're not on the field. A plus B equals C. There you go. More demolitions, more open goals that you have. I see Vivid right there with a monster shot within the first 15 seconds. It's one of the things I want Boise State to be aware of is that this St. Clair team is not going to slow down. Curious to see what kind of adjustments they make as Boise State tries to find their first win here in this tournament. Again, a best of five, and this is a top tier team that Boise State has had the pleasure of playing before and looking to take the shot there is Boise State turned away there by Icy Vivid as Elsie Coro trying to continue the pressure here is turned away there though by the Griffins a shot on goal and a last second touch Icy Vivid can destroy but he can also fix as he turns around that defensive situation for St. Clair and Boise State is found wanting but still aggressing a shot there from Ace Pocket turned away once again by the man we were just praising Icy Vivid. Elsie Coro there biting his tongue a little bit. He's feeling a little bad about that. He used his boost to try to get in position for a play. And had he not used it, he would have been in the perfect location there. Now they're going to have to go on the defensive as we go under four minutes here for this game. Boise State wanting to at least take one and push this to at least four games. Being 3 0 is not something you want against a rival team like this. Feels bad, man, but that's one of those situations, and they have to earn it here as Coro pushes that over to Ace. That was actually a really sick feed right there. 
there and could have found Boise State one, but the defense from St. Clair is spot on, just like their offense was in game number one, showing they can play both sides of the field as they will get a chance to shine here. Boise State looks to clear this out. A little bit of a messy retrieval there and a great second attempt from St. Clair. It means Boise State will have only a matter of seconds. A great flick over the top of St. Clair it means the Broncos may have an opportunity. A demolition there as Elsie Coro shows Icy Vivid he can do just the same. Take some of your own medicine there, I see Vivid. And speaking of him, a very well-rounded player, which is something we always commend the Boise State players on, not just doing well on the offensive plays, but also being able to find those rotations and pick up on defensive plays as well. And we've seen that from multiple members here for St. Clair. Boise State figuring things out, though, is we are under three minutes Stop. and not a single goal. Elsie Coro just barely missing that one. I see Vivid taking part in preventing him from grabbing that. Elsie Coro is going to remove I see Vivid once more after he takes that major boost, so a great move. And Cosmo right there going to save that really crafty ricochet shot off of the wall. Wasn't even a direct shot, came off of that right-hand side, had some prowess, had some danger to it, but Cosmo is able to get that out as Coro's picking up boost. Left back in the box with his other ally and is up over no! his head. Endeavor sneaks it through over the top of LC Coro and is going to find the first here in the second game. That seems to be the name of the game for Boise State. So many times we've seen them going for some great potential moves and last second they adjust themselves just in the wrong way and the opponent is able to either take advantage of it or already had a great play in motion that Boise right. State just could not defend against. And that's the other thing that I kind of wanted to allude to is that this time around Boise State is looking a lot more on well the ball for lack of a better term as they haven't been doing a whole lot of two on ones. Oh no this is an open opportunity turned away there by LC Coro to spend all of the boost to do so but we are not seeing a whole bunch of bunch ball if you will. We're seeing clear concise plays but right now Boise State is just taking a beating on the field as far as their cars are concerned. The repair build there's another instance must be massive. Well, and the boost, again, has been so troublesome for Boise State, and yet St. Clair is still managing to find some great offensive plays and also some demolitions here. So Boise State, yes, is focusing on that aggressive play, but they need to use the boost for saving uh, some plays here. Endeavor with a great shot on goal. Cosmo Buster saving that one, and now Boise State has the ball on St. Clair's side. Can they make a play? Ace Pocket trying to get in position gets bumped from behind there from Tiborius. That was such a great move there for the side of St. Clair to recognize that Boise State was lying in wait as Elsie Koroch clears this out. Cosmo gonna do the same thing here as it looks like BSU looks to score. They can tie this up. A minute left. A oh, cheeky little oh. move! Absolutely we filthy clean yourself, Cosmo. That was amazing. That wasn't even entirely Cosmo. If you take a look here, LC Coro ended up trying to move. There was a collision there, and it was both the fault of LC Coro and I think it was Endeavor on the side of St. Clair who mispositioned himself as well. So Boise State tied it up. One minute left on the clock, or just under, and Tibori has already taken this one on a good dribble over to Boise State side. A whole lot of ones on the scoreboard. One to one, one minute remaining. St. Clair with one game in the lead here in this best of five, but we have seen that the game can change in just a matter of seconds. Tiborius looking to get a shot there, is not able to. The follow-up by Endeavor is high. Ace Pocket able to clear this with the help of Cosmo, and now LC is going to dribble this, carries it over one member, is staunched by the second, as Boise State University has 30 seconds to find an answer. St. Clair looking to close it out and find a very definitive lead here, but instead Cosmo is going to be turned away here by the rest of St. Clair. Ace Pocket on the right-hand side, looking to make a strike. Boise State was there and they go flying right past. Cosmo Buster is able to keep this on the offensive side. Will one of these two teams find a goal in the last 10 seconds or will we be headed to overtime? It's over the top and I see Vivid seals the deal. Game two probably going over to St. Clair, or St. Clair with an absolutely amazing flip over the top. Let's see it again over Cosmo, over LC. That is going to be almost definitely a game winner for St. Clair. No boost on the side of Boise State there as well. There are four seconds. We've seen crazier things, but a great move there from St. Clair to 
Wow, almost another goal there uh, from St. Clair, actually. They just hit the side post there. Uh, but a phenomenal game from both of these teams that is going to give that definitive lead, if you will, and put the game in a match point for St. Clair here. So Boise State needs to find this next round if they want to stay in this match. Absolutely, and it's they're showing very, very, very good communication. As far as the shots on goal are concerned, now we start seeing that complete change. St. Clair, 14. You have to find a way to put these guys down. Boise State only had four shots on goal. I'm no mathematician. That's why I yell at <laughs> video games instead of, you know, go to school. But those numbers are not good and very, very scary for the Broncos. As far as the Griffins are concerned, they really can't do any wrong. Defensive, offensive, they're looking spot on. And considering the... The last game it was, it was I think, 13-8, to eight, so only a difference of five there. And now we have a difference of 10 shots. That's quite huge. Boise State getting cut down there immensely. And a lot of that, I talked about how they were focusing on being more aggressive when it came to car-to-car car, car collisions, trying to get some of those demolitions on their own side. And they did that, but it meant, as I mentioned before, that the aggressive plays were non-existent for Boise State. The one-timers from St. Clair were also spot on. That first goal of the game, if I'm not mistaken, we didn't even see Endeavor on the screen, and he came veering out of the right-hand side of the field and buried that for St. Clair. So the Griffins looking great right now as Boise State fights to stay alive. This will be match point in favor of St. Clair if they are able to seal this one. That is it for this series, and they will walk away with yet another win and uh, maintain that position at the top of the record. So Boise State definitely does have an opportunity to make moves here and to find a win, but it's going to take a lot. Not only that, I, I think if I were Ty Boreas, I'd be like, man, this is almost the last round and I don't have a goal yet. <laughs> he's had some pretty amazing plays, but I'm sure he's going to do his best to get a score on the board so that at least if they do 3-0 Boise State, each member can say that they fully participated. Not, not, it's a three-man game. you know. Absolutely. Everybody throws their own in. But, well, uh, oh, off of the crossbar. Oh, that's it's halfway right in. through, Cut. and there it is. Ty Bore is going to take the first goal of this round and the first goal for this match for himself in less than a minute, almost being saved there by Boise State. But Tybori is ensured that it was a goal. That was absolutely crazy. The way it stopped, the spin on that ball. Everybody clenched up for a half second or two as both players 50-50 and stall right there. But again, an unfortunate bounce for Boise State and probably a deserved situation for St. Clair considering one of the goals they had stolen away from them in one of the earlier games. So oh. we'll call it right as rain as Boise State <laughs> looks to get this going. Endeavor and Elsie Coyle win? are wow. just going to keep bumping each other here. They're just hanging out, playing some tug of war. Heck, this is a 2v2 game now. <laughs> Who cares at this point? Boise State says, look, if we can't beat you 3v3, we'll take you 2v2. And St. Clair is more than okay with that. The ball within <laughs> Bumper's reach. And LC Coral says, you stay here. You're mine. I'm the captain now. As a shot on goal is turned away, you see in the background the four other members of this game loving it. They're bouncing back and Endeavor forth. Endeavor seems to be winning this, this tug of war contest of thing going here though this is the kind of sportsmanship though that we have between these teams and Typhorius is going to end that stalemate by taking his second of the game and putting St. Clair up 2-0 over Boise State that that is the kind of thing though that these teams do because they play so much together they have this sportsmanship where yeah we could be going for the ball we could make a tricky play can off somebody of this, check but Coral's neither of us wants to be the one to break it is, you know? Cor is Coral still breathing can we check to make sure he's still like alive and like we don't need to call a doctor or something that was that was a first for me. I have never seen anything like that, but you're absolutely right, Jolly. Win or lose, these two teams have an absurd amount of respect for each other. In fact, Doc even mentioned the four teams we're playing today. He has appropriately named the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse because he has such respect for them. He's pretty sure they could, you know, end the world at any given point in time. Today. Oh yeah, and speaking speaking of the Four Horsemen, one of those horsemen is actually the uh, the director here that we have. Of, oh yes, uh, uh, and this is Sean Sean Burney is the director of St. Clair's Esports. Uh, we have some really cool facts here. We'll, we'll go over those as soon as uh, the, this, this potentially amazing play stops happening. Cosmo goes with the shot on goal. Tybori is saving and making goals this game. Ace Pocket attempting to get himself in position. LC Coro doing the same, but has zero boost to follow up on this. And we can tell that most everybody is out of boost, actually. 
Boise State looking for any kind of headway here. They need to catch up, and they need to catch up fast. Ace has an option, and he moves it out of the way of LC Coro. It was so close. The one-timer was there, and if you were a horn, the noise would be... Wah, he bumped wah. his vehicle, actually, I think, out of the way is what happened there. LC Coro trying to make a move, and it's not to the fault of Ace Pocket or Cosmo Buster. They could not see him, but Tiborius was able to make a swing around play off of that and put them up 3-0. Boise State now really in the grinder as this is match point. Director Sean Burney has been doing a lot of work with these players as shown by the scoreboard. Jolly, did you know it's considered a great accomplishment to go down Niagara Falls in a wooden box? Well, Sean Burney can go up Niagara Falls in a cardboard box. <laughs> Oh. Hey, hey, did you know that Sean Burney beat Halo 1, 2, and 3 on Legendary with a broken Guitar Hero controller? Which is a crazy These stat. These are all facts, It's a crazy stat considering Guitar Hero came out years after Halo it 1. Was, it's not like he played it the day they came out. Did you know he's also a time traveler? Well, you know, he, <laughs> uh, it's possible because Sean Burney also constantly refers to himself in the fourth person. That is insane. He also can hear sign language, <laughs> from my understanding. Again, these are raw stats and raw facts from the analysts themselves as, again, Boise State is continuing to try to find a way into this final game, but it has been St. Clair from game one, minute one literally across here. Is there a Boise State member to field it? The answer is unfortunately no. Cosmo Buster will be able to take out one member of St. Clair as BSU passes that over. LC Coro there is given a shot to Cosmo, is not able to find the net. LC going to pop this one back. Ace Pocket Ooh. goes right underneath it, was not quite set up the way he would have liked to have been as BSU needs to find a goal and three of them in the next 60 seconds. A very heavy mountain to lift unless you know you're good at lifting mountains or something. Ace Pocket is going to be turned away there again by St. Clair. Elsie Carl is just waiting for any kind of opportunity here. 40 seconds remain and things are looking bleak for Boise State. One of the things that we commend the Broncos on as well is their conservation of boost and the fact that they usually are able to take 100% good play, 100%, and make it last through several plays. Now here we're seeing them get 100% and end up using it to set up a play, and they don't even have the opportunity to follow through with it because St. Clair is so quick to respond to those moves. So they don't know how to use the boost properly here. They're really doing their best. Ace Pocket does get a shot on goal, and yeah. all those, it is going to roll on through. LC Coro finally gets it past the Saints. No skunk. No skunk. See, at least they got one. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's the brownie point situation. I really would like to see two goals in 11 seconds. It has been a while since I've seen anything of that caliber. If the stars align, the Broncos may be alive here. But I have a feeling St. Clair walks away with this one. The Griffins fi finding game number three as the final seconds tick down here. And that will indefinitely be that. As St. Clair picks up the game and the series, maybe just showing off a little bit here in the final seconds, Boise State will spike that to save themselves some ego. So, St. Clair, the Griffins walk away with the win. Boise State did show some fight, but just too little, too late. To be honest, in the middle of there, I thought I was watching a hockey game. It was like two had been sent to the penalty box. But as much, <laughs> but as much as Chisu was talking about people going to their rooms and having a timeout, I guess they finally decided to do that during a game. They were just having a discussion about the current status of the economical values a of A diplomatic Rocket. discussion. That's a greater way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> A diplomatic discussion, only we're having to charge at each other at high speeds and two-ton metal death traps. What's, was there another uh, way to do it? I, I mean, I did just want to point out there, as you guys could see, the kind of grainy film on, uh, you know, over, over, over Rocket League right now. They have a uh, Stranger Things kind of, kind of uh, deal going yes. on right now. Uh, it just started, and it, it makes everything look kind of cool. So there's some special event stuff yeah. going on. Maybe we'll even do something. I, I haven't been told that we're going to be doing anything. Um, but, you know, we, we do enjoy holidays, and we do enjoy special events. Uh, and I feel like we need to get the the uh, the reserves back in here relatively soon, too. So maybe, yeah, maybe we'll end up doing some sort of collaboration there. You never know. Yeah, you never know. That's going to be it for the first match of this series. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be going into the next game immediately or not, or uh, if we're going to be taking a short break. But uh, until then, are there any final thoughts on the match that we just saw? Boise State still has it. They're just a step away from having more it. Uh, that didn't come out right, but what I'm saying <laughs> is that they, they do definitely still have some status and some stature. It's just not clicking right now, and once they figure that out, things should be fine.
Oh yeah, and they've got the ball rolling now. You know, that was the first one, the, the, their warm-up game. For all we know, this is the Saints' last game of the night. It, it's, with Nace, we do have four of these games mm -hmm. going on at the time. Uh, so one out, of, one out of four. We've got three more opportunities to take things home. Well, uh, that is going to be it for the first match, but we have so much more coming up. Three still left tonight, so stay tuned because we're going to be right back with another exciting Rocket League match. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da